Hey guys, Ryan here with Bright Guy Garage, and today we are going to be looking at how to set your base initial timing. And for this demonstration, we're going to be using this beautiful 1970 Chevelle. So what is ignition? Ignition is the point at which a high voltage, low amperage charge is sent along the spark plug wire to the spark plug, bridging the gap between the electrode and the wire, igniting the air to fuel mixture within the cylinder. If we think about your basic four stroke cycle, ignition, compression, power, and exhaust, the spark plug fires on the power stroke, blowing the piston back down into the cylinder, which creates your power. However, this ignition spark actually occurs milliseconds before the beginning of the power stroke, near the end of the compression stroke. As the piston comes up in the cylinder on the compression stroke, a very short time before it reaches top dead center, or TDC, is when the spark ignition occurs. This timing is going to be measured in degrees relative to top dead center. Now that we have a basic understanding of ignition timing, I'm going to pull the Chevelle into the garage and out of the sunlight, where I'm going to read and adjust the base initial ignition timing. To set our initial timing, we will be using a mark on the harmonic balancer in relation to a timing tab generally found on the front timing cover. If we look here, we can see the mark that I have outlined in a white paint pen. In between those two lines of the white paint pen is the groove we will be using to line up to the timing tab. Here's a better look at the timing tab found on the front timing cover. Each point and notch in between the points represents degrees in relation to top dead center. If we start on the far right, that point represents 4 degrees after top dead center. That notch to the left is 0 degrees or top dead center. To the left, that next point is 4 degrees before top dead center. Then the notch in between is 6 degrees before top dead center. The next point is 8 degrees. Next notch is 10 degrees. And that last point is 12 degrees before top dead center. So, with where the line is on the harmonic balancer at the moment, it is sitting at about 8 degrees before top dead center. Before we start messing around with our timing, we're going to start our car and let it warm up to operating temperature. So with such a low engine speed at idle, the engine needs additional spark advance in order to fire the lean diluted air fuel mixture earlier to achieve maximum cylinder pressure at the proper point. This is achieved by use of the distributor vacuum advance, which is activated by high manifold vacuum at idle. This adds additional spark advance on top of your initial timing. Therefore, before we go to adjust our timing, we're going to pull the vacuum hose to the distributor vacuum advance, and we're going to block this off. As you can see, I use this very fancy high-tech screwdriver to plug off this vacuum hose. Now I have the car shut off right now for the sake of uh, you guys being able to hear me. Um, but when I start the car again, I'm going to double check that screwdriver and vacuum hose to make sure it's sealed because we don't want a vacuum leak while we're trying to do this. And if it isn't enough, then we'll go ahead and get something more adequate for the job to block it off. In order to adjust our timing, the distributor housing is going to need to be rotated. In order to do so, we first need to loosen the bolt that holds the distributor hold down clamp. Now they make special wrenches to make it easier to access that bolt, but I'm able to get to it with just a standard 9 16th wrench. With the bolt loosened, we should now be able to freely turn the distributor housing to adjust our timing. On a small block Chevy, rotating the distributor housing clockwise will retard the timing, while rotating it counterclockwise will advance the timing. By retarding the timing, you're bringing the number of degrees before top dead center closer to zero. And by advancing it, you are increasing it further away before top dead center. So for example, if your current timing is at five degrees before top dead center, and you're aiming for 10 degrees before top dead center, you're going to want to advance the timing, increasing the number of degrees before top dead center. Alternatively, if you're at 10 degrees before top dead center, and you're aiming for five degrees before top dead center, you're going to want to retard the timing to lower that number and bring your degrees closer to zero. Now we can go ahead and hook up my uh, what looks like a World War II era timing light. 
we're gonna do that by connecting the leads to battery positive and negative and from there we're gonna go ahead and take the conductive wire of the timing light and clamp it onto the number one spark plug wire this conductive clamp on the number one spark plug wire is going to send a signal to the light to flash every time the number one cylinder fires by pointing that light at the harmonic bouncer and our timing marks we're going to effectively be able to see where the timing is set every time that number one cylinder fires that is how we are going to read and set our initial base timing a note of caution be very aware of where your leads for your timing light are while you're performing this procedure be very careful not to get anything caught in the fan or any other moving parts so with the distributor advance plugged and our timing light set up we can go ahead and move forward. If we look here at this tune-up decal, we can follow it and we have an automatic transmission in this Chevelle and it is equipped with a 200 horsepower engine and it specifies 8 degrees before top dead center for the initial timing setting. Now as I said I have the car shut off so you guys were able to hear me clearly. Um, now I'm going to start the car. I'm going to check where the timing is currently at and I'm going to adjust it as necessary. Um, when moving the distributor housing to adjust the timing, you're going to want to move it in very small increments because even a quarter inch is going to give you several degrees change in your timing. So do it in very small increments, continuously go back and check where your timing's at and adjust until you get where you need. In case you had a hard time seeing what was going on, the camera doesn't pick up the timing light very well. But we're currently at 6 degrees before top dead center, and we want to get to 8. So we're going to advance the timing by 2 degrees by turning the distributor housing ever so slightly counterclockwise. Now originally we were shooting for 8 degrees before top dead center as specified by the factory tune-up label here but I really found that the engine is running its best at 10 degrees before top dead center. It's revving freely, smoothly, and it just seems really happy. It's not pinging, it's not misfiring, it's not knocking, nothing like that. So we're going to leave it at 10 degrees right where it is. And this could be due to a few different factors, it could be due to engine wear, could be due to the engine specific setup but really this is mostly stock or it could be something as simple as the fact that the factory generally likes to use conservative base settings all right now that our timing is set go ahead and tighten down the bolt for the distributor hold down clamp being careful not to nudge or bump the distributor otherwise you'll knock it back out of timing once you tighten that bolt down you can go ahead and start the car back up and double check your timing to make sure that you didn't accidentally bump the distributor while tightening it down Okay, so the timing is still sitting at 10 degrees before top dead center. Now I can go ahead and disconnect the timing light and reconnect the vacuum hose for the distributor advance. Alright, and that should about complete the job. Um, if your timing was way off, you may have noticed your idle changed while resetting the timing. Um, if that's the case, then the last thing you'd have to do is just adjust the idle appropriately and you should be good to go. And lastly, of course, now that your timing is set and the job is done, you're gonna have to go take it for a ride. And that's the fun part. Man, this thing needs an exhaust.